Uh, good morning, Chairman McCall and uh, Ranking Member Thompson and members of the committee. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to provide testimony today during this hearing to discuss ways to stop the next attack. Uh, I am not here today to be a doomsday reporter, but I do believe that our nation has experienced a paradigm shift in our global war on terror. I agree with the chair and ranking member that we should not accept the current state of affairs as the new normal. There have been numerous recent violent incidents on U.S. soil, which indicates that terror subjects have brought the fight to our homeland. They are now focusing on soft targets in our cities and counties, which puts local law enforcement officers squarely in the crosshairs of violent extremists. My community, the metropolitan Orlando area, experienced such an attack on June the 12th. Members of my agency responded to assist the Orlando Police Department in the initial response involving an active shooter. The incident remains under investigation by the FBI, but it is believed that a lone gunman killed 49 innocent people and injured another 53 persons in the Pulse nightclub incident. The incident began shortly after 2 a.m. when Omar Mateen began randomly firing at patrons of a club that catered to the LGBTQ community on a night designated as Latin night. Like no other time in our history, if we are going to be successful at reducing the attacks on American citizens by violent extremists, federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities must improve our working relationships in three ways. Number one, we must improve the access to information, the sharing of actionable intelligence information that can be used to identify and arrest subjects involved in plotting attacks before an attack occurs. And number three, funding for counterterrorism efforts to include training and equipment must be increased. As it relates to information, the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, should reassess its policy on precluding state and local law enforcement agencies from having access to the ICE database that identifies individuals as being in this country illegally. Officer and public safety become a major issue in instances when law enforcement officers do criminal history checks in the field through the National Crime Information Center, NCIC, and they are not made aware of a subject's immigration status. Immigration enforcement is clearly a function of the federal government, and sheriffs do not seek this authority. We have enough on our plates already. Our concern is for the safety of our officers. When officers or deputies encounter someone and the person is here illegally, that person assumes the police already know they are, they are illegal and have the authority to arrest and deport them. Local and state law enforcement should know who they are dealing with even if they cannot arrest for immigration violations. As it relates to sharing information, Florida sheriffs have seen increased communication from the Department of Justice and DHS to state and local law enforcement concerning uh, critical incidents. Assistant Secretary Heather Fong at DHS's Office of Partner Engagement has been a driving force behind this, and most sheriffs and police chiefs have been invited to participate in conference calls following significant national and international events affecting law enforcement and public safety. I am the current president of the Florida Sheriff's Association and give credit to DHS Secretary Johnson and FBI Director Comey for increasing communication with state and local law enforcement and for pushing facts to sheriffs directly as opposed to sheriffs receiving information from the national news media. In order for American law enforcement to prevent, respond to, and mitigate domestic terror attacks 
Analytics and training will be integral to stopping the attacks from proliferating. Central Florida has been the benefactor of numerous projects funded in previous years by the Urban Area Security Initiative, or USA grant program. We have been working for the past two years to get DHS funding restored uh, to our region. Primarily, members of Congress from both the House and Senate have worked with Orlando Police China, Chief Mina and me in these efforts. We have petitioned DHS and FEMA to reassess the Orlando Kissimmee Sanford, Florida MSA and the need to strengthen and secure Central Florida uh, from another terror attack like the Pulse nightclub incident. The Central Florida region has been fortunate to receive approximately $45.5 million in U.S. funding since 2004. The Orange County Sheriff's Office has managed the funds. The funding received prior to 2013 was critical to our region's ability to prevent, protect, respond to, and recover from not only terrorism, but a broad range of other threats and hazards. We are only as good at preventing a terror attack as the quality of information we receive about that attack. 